Randy, the Thunder Horse Descendant. I am here today uh, with my Bargain Bee box. So um, if you have been, hello, I'm so grateful to be back here today. If you've been following along with me, um, I'm working with the March box and uh, we have started doing coffee time. It's like 9, 10 ish in the morning. I haven't quite uh, dialed that in yet, but uh, we're doing, I'm, I, I say we, but I um, have been doing live um, coffee club. So if you are new here and you like this channel, come to coffee club. It's live in the morning. You can chat with me and um, we've been doing different things on there for the most part. I have uh, just recently started doing YouTube lives. I usually do Facebook lives, so I am working on it. <laughs> um, but in the morning time, we did some designing of our Bargain Bee box in my book. This is my little book that I work in. It's my like design kind of memory book. And we sketched out these little designs. These are not my best work, but you know. Um, <laughs> And then I did this one live um, on Sunday, and I am going to show it to you here because um, I found that the video quality, I have to, uh, for YouTube, I have to download some apps or I have to figure out how to make the YouTube quality better when I'm live. So I am going to show you that necklace and I'll show you the design that we sketched out for it. And then in this video, I'm going to do the second design, which is this one that we sketched out during um, live coffee time. Coffee club. So I've been trying to do live coffee club every morning. Sometimes we design things. We look at some stuff like it's nothing. It's just like morning fun. Just checking in, letting you guys know what I'm up to and all that good business. So without further ado, let's jump into the bargain bead box. Make something. Here we go. All right, guys. So here we are. This is the little sketch that we had made and I talked about um, doing, I think we had talked about doing three projects with the March bargain bead box. So this is the first one that we sketched out. Like I said, I did it live and this is what it is. So... For some of you who didn't get, you know, the clear look at it, this is what she looks like. I think it turned out pretty good, actually. I love these little parts here. Um, I believe it was, who was it? Rebecca, who had said, who had suggested. These were people who were involved with the live. She had suggested putting these. And so that's kind of the fun part. You guys can... You know be interactive during the lives which is why i really want to do them um but like i said this is not my not my most uh best drawing because i did this on a live in the morning um <laughs> but i think the necklace turned out well i really like it now um for our second project we we sketched this one and so that's the one that we're going to make today. And then we had also sketched out this third one, um, if you saw that on the live. So um, I'm going to make this one today. And hopefully it looks a lot better than this drawing. Here we go. <laughs> so I had kind of uh, split these up these beads up a little bit so I could make these projects and make sure I had enough uh you know everything kind of reserved for them so we are using this pendant today one of them these came in a set of two and we're going to be using one of the crystal strands And I can't remember if they said these were adventuring. I have the list here. I'm going to look. A 16-inch strand of crystal rondelles in teal green champagne. That's these. And 
a 14 inch strand of six millimeter green agate round beads. So this was number five and this one was number 10. And then also, these rondelles, which were, oh, let's see, metallic green iris. This was number 18. So that's what I have reserved for this necklace. Um, we shall see if I need to, I don't, I don't know if we're going to have enough beads, honestly. I'm going to try. I don't know if we might have to add something. So I'm not going to swear absolutely to this because this is a three strand necklace. Um, but we're going to hope. So without further ado, here we go. All right, guys, here we are on the mat. I have just gotten all of the beads out for us and I did grab a little chain and I'm thinking we might need to utilize some of that and in order to tie it all in we might also be using some of the leaves but we'll see how it goes um first things first what I'm gonna do is I am gonna get ready to use this pendant so I'm going to cut this loop off and I'm going to file it down. Easy peasy. Just cutting that with my cutter. And where's my little file? I'm just going to file this a little smidge. So we're ready to go here. All right, now we're ready. Just making sure that is okay. It seems okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use soft flex. I guess I can. <clears throat> I'm going to use some medium soft flex. So this is medium soft flex. And I'm thinking I want this necklace to be about 20 inches. Um, so I'm going to get myself about, uh, we would need 10 inches then for it to be 20 inches on one side. I'm also going to be using a clasp and um, we have the toggles. So there is not going to be much room for extra. So I'm going to get myself about a foot, about 12 inches just to start out with because... Uh, we're gonna, just going to run it through this hole here. And since this is silver, I'm not real concerned about it showing up on there as part of the focal. If you were concerned about it, I would suggest um, maybe using some seed beads. And maybe we can do that on one of the other ones, one of the other strands that we're going to make. Um, just to see how it looks, so... I'm just putting my crimp bead on there. And we're going to get started. Let's zoom in. So, crimping. Crimping, we have lips and eyes. So, first we're going to we're going to crimp with the lips, make sure it's not twisted in there. Okay? And then we're going to turn it sideways. Put it in the eye and kind of roll that bead on top of each other when we squeeze down. And then that's what you get. 
So pull test looks good. I am going to use, um, well, you know what? No, I don't think I will use a bead cover. I was going to use a bead cover, but I don't think I will. I think this will be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start stringing on and I think I'm just thinking out loud to myself here. You know what I'm going to do to make, cause I don't, I just honestly, I don't feel like we have enough beads. Whoops. I don't feel like we have enough beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start both sides at the same time. So that I can do both of them at the same time. So I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. So that I can string kind of on both sides at the same time. So I don't have to go through and count all my beads, you know. Um, you guys will see what I'm talking about here in just a moment. So again, we're going to repeat this step. And we're going to repeat this step a lot. With the crimping and everything. Um, so. Crimp. Crimp. Pull test. Looks good. Okay, I'm just going to trim these little wires up just a smidge on the end. I do leave a little bit. Just go through another bead or whatever. Just That's just how I prefer to do it. It's my personal opinion. So, now what I think we'll do is let's just start out with these larger ones. And I'm going to go, we're going to call the left side, side A. So on side A, I'm going to put five beads. Four. Five. Okay. Then we're going to switch to side B, which is the right side. And we're going to put five beads. Three. And I'm going to bring those all down here so we can get the gist of it. Nice. Let me just move these guys out of the way. So now we're going to go back to side A. We're going to add five more beads. Three. And side B, we're going to add five more. Two, three, four, five. And basically all we're doing here is we are just adding the same amount of beads on each side to make sure that we have enough on each side without actually having to go through and count them. So now on side A, I'm going to add five more. One, two, three, four, five. So you can see our beads are dwindling fast. One, two, three, four, five for side B. All right, so now we only have four left, so each side will get two. And we're done with those. So we'll put these two on side A. And these side two on side B. 
So now our necklace has the same amount of beads for these, these kind of beads on each side. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to finish anything just yet. I'm going to take bead stopper because <clears throat> you don't know what we might have to do here. <laughs> take a bead stopper and I'm just going to take both of those strands and I'm going to put this bead stopper on there. And we are going to move on to the next strand. Like I said, this is a three strand necklace. So I'm going to take another 12 inches of wire once and twice. And I'm not measuring this, I'm just guessing. And we're going to start our second strand. Same way we did the first time. So I like this sparkle here. I think I will do uh, this jade next or not jade agate and then sparkle on the bottom we shall see so i'm going to when i start this strand i'm going to start it underneath the first strand like that and put our bead stop uh crimp bead crimp tube whatever you're working with there put that on here and we crimp test looks good and the other side again making sure it's underneath the first wire in that loop and we crimp and I got the side of the had the side of the in, in my crimper there we go pull test looks good and now we move on to side two so again I'm just gonna get these little trim these little extra bits just one side I guess and then we'll go with these and it's gonna be the same process start with five on side a And side B you'll get five. Ooh. Okay, and then we're just gonna do like that. Add five to this side. Okay. 
and five to side B. Alrighty, back to side A. Basically, I'm adding five each time I switch strands. Over here to side B at five. Until our beads start to dwindle and we start to see that one's kind of defective. Start to see what uh, we're working with here. Back to side A. Side A, they're getting thinned out now. And side B gets five. And five for side A. And five for side B. And we would have had two more, but this one is defective, so I'm just not going to, I'm gonna leave these two out. And I'm gonna add these in to our little bundle. <clears throat> our little bundle of uh, beading here. This is what she's looking like. And, uh, We'll put on the last strand, and then we will start making design decisions. <laughs> I like that it's looking thus far. Okay, back to the to the wire here. Mr. Bunsen is crying. Uh, that's weird. I have to go investigate. I'll be right back. Okay, apparently it was a false alarm. Mr. Bunsen was just trying to get Jeff's attention. <laughs> I thought he might have been got out into the garage or locked in a closet or something. You never know. So, I've started our third strands here. Just got those going. We'll do the same with our next set of beads. So, starting with strand A. 
I think I'll do 10 this time. Because clearly we could probably get 10 on there. So there is 10 for side A. <laughs> Bunsen, I'm down here. Do you hear him? He's like, where are you? I'm over here. <laughs> One, two, three. And there's 10 for side B. Back to side A. <clears throat> 10 over here. One, two, Side A, do ten on side B. And back to side A. Judging by the beads, I think we could do 10 again. Side B gets 10. And 10 for side A. Ten for side B, and they're starting to dwindle.
How many do we have left here? Splitting them up into piles. Oh, looks like we can do five more on each side. So side A, one, two, three, four, five. What are you into over there, Shicey Cat? Doesn't sound great, whatever it is. <laughs> Alrighty. So, I've got to investigate that on Melmond. Alright. He has a piece of chain over there and he's just running it on the metal shelf. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some make some decisions here. I'm going to put this bead stopper over here on side B on all three of those. And I'm going to get this side straightened out so we can see what we got here. Pull. Okay. So... They are kind of tapered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish them off. I wish, see, if we had more beads, if we had more beads, we could just add beads and, uh, you know, go from there just to make them all the same length. Like, maybe bead them all up. Because, honestly, I think, let me just get my tape measure here. I don't think even this one is long enough. It would have to be nine inches. Well, maybe it is. But still, that is, that's going to give us an 18 inch necklace. We do have our toggle clasp. Um, so. I mean, 18 inches is pretty good. I could add some jump rings. Okay. Well, let's do this. I am going to finish this side. I'm going to use the longest side, the blue, the bluer crystals, as my guide. I believe this is nine inches. Um, so I will make the other strands. Um, I will add chain. To the other strands, after I've finished them, I'll add chain in order to match this longest one here. And then we will go from there. So, let me start by finishing this one up. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to add a crimp bead. I'm going to get myself a large 8 millimeter oval jump ring in silver. And I'm just going to attach to this for now. This is removable, so if you did decide you didn't want to use that, you know, you can. But I am going to finish this here, just like that. Because I'm not using any wire guardians or anything on this necklace. And I want the beads to be tight, but not so tight that they can't move around a smidge. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crimp this. Here, Jake toes coming down. Mm. 
Okay. Pull test looks good. Give it a trim. And we'll do the next one. Now with this one, I'm going to put on the bead cover, or the bead cover, the crimp bead. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get our chain in here. And I know we don't need all this, but I'm just going to connect to it for the time being. Go back through that tube. Go through a couple of beads there. And give this a crimp. So here, is where I'm going to trim, I'm just going to make sure these are even, and I'm take my cutter, and I'm going to say, I'm going to leave one extra link just in case. think we're gonna need that one cut him off and open him this one up and add him onto here now if when I hang it if I need to take off a link or so I'll be able to do that with the chain so I'm not too concerned it's looking pretty good right there so close him up And finish this one. And if when I hold it up, because FYI, <laughs> if, uh, you know, when you work on the mat flat and then you go to put it on and it might hang differently because that's just part of it. Um, it is just different. Uh, and if at that point it's hanging funny and I need to add a link of chain, that's no big deal either. So, just doing the same on this side. Now, this side's going to have this strand, because we're still on strand A. It's going to have a lot more chain than the others, because we didn't have as many beads over here. But that's fine. I think it'll make for an interesting element. But look at all this extra string I had. So, FYI on that, you don't need all that, I guess. But like I said, I didn't know what we were going to... If we were going to add more beads or what we were going to do. So I'm just getting this straightened out. And we're crimping. What are you doing, Jakey? Get out from under there. You looking for Bunsen? He's down here somewhere. I heard him. Jake's down here looking for Bunsen. Get that snip. And you can always, yeah, you can always save these. <laughs> Bunsen's hiding underneath Jake's bed from Jake. That's super funny. You can always save these and use them for bracelets or whatever you know no big deal no strand of wire left behind no fear okay so now again I'm just gonna make sure this is all laying the way I want bring it up here make sure this is straightened out before I start 
chopping away the chain here. So I am going to leave a little extra just in case. And then kind of give it a give it a look see here. So we have probably gonna cut two off of here. Jake, get out from there. Open this guy up. Put him on there. See where we're at. I could maybe even I could maybe even come off uh one little piece of chain there, but I don't know how I don't know if I'll do that until um I get it hooked up so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and I will be right back all right party people here we are so I'm gonna just end it and put the clasp on sorry I just had to have a zip of coffee let me show you better here let's get some of this debris out of the way So what I ended up doing, I did the other side, and what I ended up with, because once I got this side figured out, and we did the other side, I just counted the chains, the chain, um, you know, numbers of chain that I had, and I ended up with 9 on this one, and 31 on this one. So, I think, you know, for the most part, that's... That's okay. Pretty good estimate. So I feel like we would have 18 inches here. But like I said, I wanted to do, I'm going to add a couple of jump rings. I don't know if I'll need that many. But I'm going to add a couple of jump rings for my clasp. Because we have this toggle clasp here. And... Uh, you guys, I don't know. I know I should use it because it came with the box, but my personal preference is to use a lobster. Just because it's a necklace. And, but I mean, there's enough weight where it should probably be fine. It's just, um, I just feel like I should use a, a lobster. But we'll use the toggle because that's what we that's what came with the box, so that's what we're gonna use. But I just if you have that issue as well, because I just don't I don't know. I always struggle with like should I put a toggle on a necklace, you know, especially if there's not a lot of weight. But there is some pretty nice weight to this, so I think it'll be fine. I'm going to add Let's see, should I add one or two? I think I'm going to add one more big oval jump ring here, and then I'm going to add a smaller one. I'm going to add a six millimeter. And we'll see how that looks. I don't know if I want to commit to this or not. Bunsen, Bunsen, Bunsen. Bunsen is stuck on the table, digging in the Jesse James bead bowl. I'm sure he found some treasures in there he would like to take to his cat cave. Oh. So this is what's going to add my length. I could have went with more chain. Ooh. 
I could have went with more chain on um, the necklace, but I was using this, the green crystals as kind of a guide. And I just thought all we really need is an inch or so anyways. So what I've done is I've added onto that one that we've linked onto oval jump ring. I added one more larger oval jump ring and then a smaller oval jump ring. Um, that smaller one is just for it to be tighter. And also because when you put this through the toggle, it's going to need a, I didn't want to put a big jump ring in there so it wouldn't be able to move. Um, I know you're asking, are you concerned at all about having that little jump ring in there with all this, you know, holding the necklace together? And honestly, the answer to your question is no. I don't worry about the oval jump rings because they are not designed, and this is one of the reasons I love them and use them so much, they're not designed to um, ever put the weight of your jewelry piece on the weakest part of the link, like a round one is. Now, of course, if I do use round ones, I use I usually try to use locking jump rings. That is just a personal pe preference. Um, and yeah, the gauge matters. And, you know, you would want to use a heavier gauge if you're going to use a really, you know, like a stone or something. Um, but for the most part, for the weight of this necklace, I think we are fine using this two bigger ones and then a smaller one. And then that also, in my opinion, should allow that to go through there a lot smoother than if you had a big one on there. You know what I mean? So, everything feels okay there in the back. <clears throat> Alrighty. You guys, I'm thinking it turned out pretty snazzy. Get that out of the way. Uh, let's just take a little measurement and see. I'm guessing 20 inches. I'm guessing. To the clasp. Ah, not quite. Still at 18. So if I wanted another inch. Uh, if I wanted another inch. I would have to add probably two more jump rings. So let's just. Let's just put it on a. Let's just put it on and see what we think. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. And here she is. And I'm super excited to get uh I'm super excited to get some video and some photos here. Got a tail sticking out of my crystal. I gotta get that in there before I put it on. Because that would not be good. There we go. Okay, so here is kind of the situation, too, when you're working on the mat versus working on, like, a person or, you know, real life. <laughs> so I really, honestly, I thought the measurement would be better for this would be 20, but it is what it is. If it's 18 and it works fine, then okay. Or if it's 20 and we need to add a little something, then okay. Let's see what we got. Kind of get everything straightened out. Hey! Hey. I don't know, guys. I think 18 is good. I think 18 is good. Just looking to make sure everything's kind of laying right. Now, I will say, there's a little bit of wiggle room here in this area. If you wanted to maybe just scooch down a little bit. Instead of having to remove links, you probably could do that. But I don't know. The, the top one, the top one probably could have had 30 links instead of 31. But I'll scooch it down. I mean, honestly, I think it worked out great. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Look, and you could hang charms here if you wanted, if you had, um, if you had any certain charms you wanted to hang or, you know, if you didn't, I think it kind of looks nice. This, I'm a layerer though, so I love to do a good layer. 
you know so sometimes I'll have a middle I'll have a middle necklace as well so I have this long one and then I might have one here in the middle that maybe has a bunch of stuff on it so it's kind of nice to have more of like a just a you know you guys I like it a lot super excited Alrighty. well I will get you guys some pictures and um a little finished video and some photos and um all that good business so yeah anyway i hope you guys are enjoying these videos if you are please support your girl by leaving a comment and let me know that you're enjoying them that you want me to keep doing them um come join us for coffee morning coffee club is like between 9 and 10 a.m <laughs> central time it's like between 9 and 10 <laughs> i put a thing out on facebook so usually but we do it live on youtube so anyways if you look here in the morning for us i'm gonna, i'm trying to be better about doing it um but yeah we've just been i've just been having a lot of fun just getting introduced to the youtube lives trying things live and working on my camera setup and all that business and I love talking to you guys and getting to know you a little better and I, I'm seeing people come around who have seen before um but yeah if you want to support me today please do me a favor leave a comment do a like subscribe to my channel do a share do all the YouTube things it's very helpful um I know it takes a little bit of time but you know I would appreciate it I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you next time for our design number three. Oh, I should probably show you this, right? Since we started with this. Design number two. This was our design. This one. This is the one we just made. Yeah. And then design number three is this guy. That one's going to be a little interesting because, you know, the box is dwindling. Anyways, I'm blabbering on. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.